in this lesson we're going to go over the vector components and how we can visualize them in multiple topics in physics uh, we're going to skip the first topic that is a list of scalars and vectors that is a topic from o levels so we are not going to get into that the second one is uh, add and subtract coplanar vectors uh, this will be covered in the third topic in its own self right so first we need to understand what are vector components and how to make them the basic idea lies in this idea that we want to make sure that a vector be that at any angle in reference to north south east and west can be represented into its components so what are those two components we want to represent an axis a component along the x axis and we want to represent a component along the y axis so that we can use them to add and subtract vectors right so let's say that uh, one of the vectors of a force that is 100 newtons in given is given to you now this vector could be a force it could be velocity it could be acceleration and it could be displacement so in all these cases uh, this method can be used to uh, find out the components along the x-axis and y-axis so the very first thing that you need to do is let's say that the angle is given to you as 30 degrees we can apply trigonometric ratios and eventually land on this idea that this base component which is actually along the x-axis uh, actually comes down to this factor whatever this may be this could be 100 newton this could be 5 meters per second this could be 5, 10 meters per second square acceleration this could be 300 meters of displacement so whatever this number is this one write that down and this x component usually is with cos or cosine of the angle that is 30 degrees and then the y axis component generally comes down to this side so y axis comes out as this number again so 100 but this time this will be sine of 30 degrees you can use simple trigonometry to figure out these answers because this hypotenuse is 100 which is mentioned over here and you can use uh, simple trigonometric ratios to eventually get these get to these ideas now another common misconception of this is that uh, we can only find out components from one side now be advised that if you just look at this carefully with this 30 degrees angle uh, right now we found every component on this side of the system now we're going to find the components from this side of the system and we will see that it is going to give you the exactly same answers so if we make a grid at this point we understand that this angle is going to be 60 degrees so this time around this component will be broken down as a shadow of this 100 newtons and we have this one component along this axis basically you have to break down these components visualizing the resultant that is already given to you where is this object or where is this force or vector going to go so you have to break it down along y axis and x axis so over here i see that this now let's discover a shortcut so whatever angle you're assuming the vector in front of the angle will generally be the sine function right so this will be 100 sine of 60 and the one that is touching the angle apart from the hypotenuse will be the cosine function so this can very quickly be mentioned as cos of 60. Now notice that we found 100 sine 30 in the upwards direction in the first diagram and 100 cos 60 on the other side. They are both equal. You can actually calculate them and you'll find them to be equal. So it does not matter for a vector diagram, no matter what direction you choose to find out its angles or its components from. Now let's take displacement for example. So let's say this is 300 meters at an angle of 40 degrees. So let's explore all the options that we probably have in this situation. So we understand that the angle at this side will be 50 degrees to make the total 90 degrees angle. So there will be one component along this axis and one component over there. This will become 300 in front of the angle is actually sine. So this becomes sine of 40. Touching the angle becomes cos. So this will be 300 cos of 40. If we wanted to go from the other side, then this would be this vector. And then it will be this vector. So in front of this angle would be fifth a sine function. So this will be 300 sine of 50 degrees. And this y axis component from the other side will become 300 because this is what we want to distribute, right? We want to destroy this. We want to dismantle this into its respective x and y components such that if we make a resultant out of it, it will give you the same answer. So this will become a 300 cos of 50. And if you use a calculator, you will see that uh, these components, which are representing the upwards direction, will eventually be coming out exactly the same as each other. 
and the ones that are being represented for x axis will exactly be the same right so now let's try to solve a simple question in terms of vector addition or vector uh, components right so for example there is an object placed on the floor like this and it is experiencing a few forces and we are supposed to find out the resultant for example these angles are given in terms of the horizontal right so let's say this is uh, 15 newtons of force at an angle of 30 degrees and this is let's say 70 newtons of force at an angle of 50 degrees we are supposed to find out the resultant so the resultant basically will be calculated as the resultant along the x-axis square plus the resultant along the y-axis square whole square with the under root and if you notice this actually becomes uh, this actually is taken from uh, the Pythagoras theorem right and then we can also suggest the angle as well but for this time we are only focusing on the resultant to quickly solve this and get to the questions so first we make the components along the x-axis this one will be 50 cos of 30 and this one will be 70 cos of 50 we can see them very clearly from the techniques that I've just discussed with you in this previous slide, right? How to make them quickly and how to visualize them. And one of the components will be actually going to go like this along the y-axis. So this will be 50 sine of 30. And this will be 70 sine of the angle, which is 50, right? So let's calculate these values for all of these components. I'm taking a pause at this point. You can calculate this on their own and then you can verify your answers. So these should be your answers. Of course, I've rounded off uh, this 45 from 44.99, and this is 43.6623. So we have rounded off to 53.6. Now, let's visualize this. This was given in the question. This vector was also given in the question. We're going to go past this and realize the forces in their true nature. So one of the forces is on this side with 43.3. One of the forces is on this side with 45 one of the components is in the upward direction as 25 and one of the components from this side is is 53.6 now simply going back to o levels what you used to do is that all the vectors in same plane will be added or subtracted based on their directions now 43.3 is being opposed by 45 so it looks like that there is only a force on the left side with 43.3 minus 45 giving us an answer of 1.7 so this is 1.7 newtons in the left direction in the dominating vectors direction right these two forces are acting upwards in the same direction so they will be added together and the resultant would look something like this 25 plus 53.6 that will give me an answer of 78.6 newtons now since the resultant was asked from us what we can generally do now is simply apply the pythagoras theorem and understand that the resultant will be in this direction you can either use head to tail method whatever method you choose is necessary to understand this then the resultant actually is simply square of this plus square of this and under root 78.6 square plus 1.7 square don't forget to take the under root at the end and we are left with 78.6 as our resultant 78.6 newtons as our resultant right don't be fooled by this these two numbers being similar actually this resultant or this uh, component is too small for any contribution mathematically speaking that's why the answer is exactly the same. Otherwise, there will be different answers. But we understand how to resolve vector components and how to look at them, how to visualize them. We will move towards some questions uh, to see where we will find them in reality. So the year and men year and uh, variant is mentioned over here. You can verify this from the question papers and marking schemes. Okay, so what he wants to uh, find out is what is the resultant forward force on the sledge. So he wants you to find out the forward force. We are not interested with the upwards or downwards force only the forward force so we're going to make components and again you have a choice right so one of the components is going to go like this and then it is going to go like this and over here one of the components will be like this and then one of them will be like this so i'm required to find out this component and this component and then simply add them together so i can see that this is in front of 65 and this is in front of 45 so I know that this is going to be a sine function of this 200, which this dog is applying. So this will become 200 sine of 65. And this is 120, so this will become 120 sine of 45. You simply add them together. Why? Because they're both adding, they're both entering uh, or applying a force in the same direction. So the answer that you're going to get is 
actually 266 newtons which up to two significant figures is option c one more thing just to uh, clarify that if you had taken these components from these angles for example then this angle would have been uh, 25 and this angle would have been 45 you could have taken these components as the front components or as the excessive components they would still give you the same answer so in this case it would have been 200 cos of 25 plus 120 cos of 45 even in this case the answer is going to be 266 something newtons right which is going to be c part we move towards this question number three and this is one of the questions that has created generally it creates a lot of problem with the students uh, because they visualize it incorrectly now he tells you that the speed of the airplane is 200 he has not mentioned the direction what is the actual direction of this 200 so what the airplane can do at best on a good day is 200 a speed of 200 now wind blows from west this is the other confusion that he creates now when he says that it is blowing from the west it means that the wind is coming from this side right so this is our grid so the wind is actually blowing from west to east okay in which direction should the pilot steer the aeroplane in order to fly due north now due north is going to be your resultant now whatever happens you want your aeroplane to actually move towards the north direction so for example this is your aeroplane right and if you can carry on with the speed of 200 kilometers an hour and you encounter wind coming from this side your resultant would be somewhat in this direction right so what we want to do is we want to steer the plane which want to change its direction so that even if its nose is in this direction the incoming wind cannot affect it and it eventually moves straight so no matter what happens we want the plane to go straight so what we are going to do i am going to change the direction of the aeroplane such that its reference direction eventually produces such an x component so that the wind coming from the west can be cancelled out i repeat the statement what i want to do is this 200 is going to produce this x axis component and y axis component this is where i want the plane to go if i carry it over here this is where i eventually want the plane to go but the wind is coming from this side at 85 i want this 200 to tilt so much that after adjusting this angle and making this component this becomes exactly equal to 85 so simply applying the vector component rules that we've studied and this is our resultant this is where we want to end up right so we want to balance out this 85 coming from the left side so i will change the direction of my aeroplane in the new position so that i can compensate for this 85 so that it does not affect my direction i can eventually move in the north direction okay so let's write down the equation so since i need this component this is in front of the angle of theta so this will be a sine function so i am left with 200 sine theta which is this component should be this component balancing out or being equal to 85 so over here if you take the theta or you eventually take the sine inverse and calculate this algebraically you are left with the angle of 25 point two degrees and since this is north this is east this is south and this is west the sector where we are expecting this to land or we are expecting this to go is supposed to be in this region from northwest or among northwest right so i should be choosing northwest and northwest as my examples so option a and c will not even be considered right so i am supposed to move 25 degrees or 25.2 degrees towards west from north so the correct answer will be option d okay right this is a question from p2 and uh, in this we are just going to look at uh, the components that he's expecting us to make so we are supposed to make a horizontal component and a vertical component of u very simply we are given the resultant right we are given the hypotenuse so we can simply write down the respective components so one is going to be along the x-axis and one of them will be along y-axis so the horizontal component which is the x-axis will be found as 12 
cos of 50, which is this one, right? And the vertical component, which is this one, is in front of the angle. So this will be a sine function. So this becomes 12 sine of 50. So this will be 12 sine of 50. And most definitely, you're going to put in the calculated values, right? Then the question becomes easy uh, as once you've figured out the components. This is basically a question from moments, but uh, we are going to explore the vector components part of this situation. So he asks us, what is the value of f so the system remains in equilibrium, right? So we know that uh, one of the moments will be clockwise because of the weight, and one of the moments is supposed to be anti-clockwise because of this f component, okay? So let's make that component. There are two choices that we have. One of them is already given to you in the question. This is going to be one of the components going to be in this direction, and one of them will be in this direction. Now be advised, uh, the component that is the horizontal component is not responsible for moment. The component that is responsible for generating moment will be this vertical component, because only this can create a moment or such a moment that is going to oppose the moment of the weight, right? So we have two choices. First, we can write down this as F, sine of 30 degrees because in front of the angle or we can choose the other side of the triangle which is going to be like this one it's your choice completely it does not matter how you visualize this it does not matter so of course there is going to be this component as well but this is not responsible for moment this is responsible for moment so this angle is 60 degrees this one will become f cos of 60 right so i will solve this for both perspectives you can choose what you want to do okay so since the distance is not given to us what we're going to do we're going to assume the distance so this will be let's say since it's a uniform rod the distance towards the weight of the object or center of gravity will exactly be uh, at the center so uh, the moment because of this 10 newton force becomes f into d which is going to be equal to the f multiplied by its distance from pivot so this is the weight right so 10 multiplied by its distance from the pivot, which is D, equals to F, which is the F sine 30 factor, because what the, whatever is given in the question, we are taking it as it is. So this will be F sine 30 multiplied by its distance from the, fa uh, from the pivot, which is at the edge. So this will be taken as 2D. Now naturally, D cancels out from both sides. D cancels out. So we are supposed to find out F so 10 divided by 2 into sine of 30. This sine 30 will be divided, okay? So your F will come out as 10 newtons. Now, a student who has used or who wants to use this F cos 60 function, he can also do the same thing. So this will be F cos 60 multiplied by 2D because it is twice the distance from the pivot. By the way, this is the pivot of the system, okay? equals to it is counterbalancing the moment of the weight so that will be 10 multiplied by d again d cancels out from both sides because we have just assumed whatever distance that may be and you're left with f is equal to 10 sorry 10 divided by 2 this will be 10 divided by 2 multiplied by this cos 60 being divided cos 60 so again this answer will exactly come out as 10 newtons so you can see from both examples it does not matter whether you take this component or take this component as long as you've uh, visualized the directions correctly and as long as you're taking them from the correct angles, it would not matter.